okay hey, hey hey friends so sorry about that i am going live dual today and um so i was having a little bit of trouble over on the amazon platform so i'm live on youtube <laughs> live on amazon at the same time and this is the first time i've done that so had a little bit of a technical issue happening there. So today I'm really excited because we are going to make some Easter crafts. And I'll be honest with you guys, I've been doing tons of little Easter crafts um, over the course of the past, what, uh, two weeks now. And so if you've not seen them, I did some dupes and I actually have another one coming live tomorrow and I can't wait to show you guys this one. Um, so I think it actually might be my favorite. So let me see if I can show you guys really quick um, we did this one. Um, this was the Pottery Barn Easter Basket. And I have to admit, guys, love, love the Pottery Barn Easter Basket. Now, my guys are older, so I actually did this one for my niece. Um, but they're absolutely adorable, but they're so expensive. And so if you, um, I have all the video links for the dupes down in the description if you guys want to go over and check those out. So to be able to make that basket with your maker, if you have a maker, or if you have a Cricut Explore and you want to be able to make that with, um, you know, bonded fabric, if you guys have used your Explore to cut bonded fabric yet. So you can do that to make those um, Pottery Barn Easter baskets. And then I also did um, this one, I have to admit, I, I really love this one too. This is, um, a Grandin Road sign and I love their stuff. They have some absolutely adorable things and some things that I couldn't do if I wanted to, but this one using infusible ink, I mean like it really turned out well. And I was able to um, use Infu well, infusible ink and um, because it's not normally going to bond to canvas, I was able to use that and um, make it look rustic. Okay guys, so I am in comments, my comments I think are up. So I would love to know who's here and where are you from? And candidly, I would love to know um, what kind of Cricut you own. So if you own a Joy, if you own a Maker, if you own an Explore. So if you guys um, would tell me where you're from and what machine you're using, that would be fantastic. And I think I'm like, just realized I'm off center. <laughs> So I'm going to move over a little bit and be center of the stage. Okay, so if you guys are um, in comments, let's see. And Okay, so we have looked at the Pottery Barn Easter Basket. I showed you the sign. Um, and I did want to tell you guys that if you hop over to Hobby Lobby, it's like an everyday deal for them. They have those canvas, like this was a really large canvas, and it was a 16 by 20 but it's about $2.60 if you buy the pack. That's $12.99 every day. If you buy that pack, um, it's like $2.60 for a canvas, which you absolutely cannot beat that. So for the price that I show like in that video, you can not only make one, but you can make one for your mom and your sister and your friend and whomever, um, all for that price. So, oops. So I was gonna show you, this was my final one. And this is actually it in my kitchen um, and ended up styling it a little bit different in the end, but I wanted to get a quick shot of it. And I really love how it turned out. Um, and then tomorrow I am duping this. So this will be up and live tomorrow. So it's another Grandin Road, um, but it is like a tulip carrot door swag. And I'll be honest with you guys, I went to the Dollar Tree and whipped this baby up and it turned out better than I thought it was going to turn out. Um, and so I'll have all the details in the video tomorrow so you guys can pop over to the Dollar Tree and grab those. And I couldn't find tulips. I couldn't find tulips even at Hobby Lobby, um, especially not that color, you know, like kind of that orangish color. So I used a different flower, but wow, it turned out really, really good. Okay, so um, let's see. So that one. Okay, so let's pop back over um, if anybody is, I think I'm doing this right in the comments. I think you have to be a subscriber of the channel to be able to be in comments. So um, if you're trying to comment and you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, you may have to do that for it to show up. But I would love for you guys to let me know where you're um, hanging out with me from. Okay, so we're going to do two different um, iron on projects today. And so if you are a member of my email list, I sent out a file. I sent some SVGs 
see if I can show you guys. I sent some SVGs the other day. This is actually the full set. Um, and today we're going to be doing the Shake Your Cottontail up in the upper left corner. But my subscribers received the Hoppy Easter one that's down in that bottom corner. And so I have links in the description. If you want to join my email list, you get weekly SVGs. Um, and then, you know, just tons of other like inspiration ideas, not just my own stuff, but I share other things as well. And then um, it also down in the description, there's a link to my Etsy shop, which has like the full set of SVGs. OK, so let's go ahead. And that is my heat press telling me that it is ready to go. So we are going to be using that in just a moment. Okay, so let's pop back over. So I have everything just to save some time. I went ahead and cut out my vinyl or my iron on my HTV and I have multiple colors. So this particular design has just tons of color in it. And so um, I have green, two pinks, a gray, a blue. And so we're going to be using all of those in the, um, the larger shirt. But I didn't want you guys to have to like sit through that whole process of like cutting each of those. However, I did want to show you guys a hack on how when you have multiple colors like that, you would be able to um, cut them all without having to swap your mats back in and out. So if you are kind of new to Cricut or if you have not cut multiple colors um, before, this is just a great tip for you to be able to do that. And so I actually um, just videoed it really quick and then put it on time lapse so we could watch it together or, you know, be there together. And I was hoping that I could get um, I was afraid I was going to have trouble with my dual stream, which I did a little bit. So I'm going to see if I can't figure that out as well. OK, so so this is. Um, Sorry, guys. Bear with me one second. Here we go. There we go. So what I did is I put the all of the iron on on the mat at the same time. Actually, I put five colors and I have six. And so what I did is on the mats in Cricut Design Space, I just put them in the corners, you know, that worked best um, for the size of the cut. And then every time it ended a cut, you just unload your mat and then load it right back. And so the machine is going to go to those other corners and cut all those different colors. So I was able to cut five colors without, you know, having to like stop, cut, reload. Like I was able to cut all the iron on at one time and do that all at one time. So that really saves a ton of time. And so then um, once I was done cutting everything, I just went ahead and um, I guess I'm not going to be able to fix that. Sorry guys, I was trying to fix a little technical issue, but then I went ahead and um, weeded everything out so that then we would just be able to go ahead and use the easy press and use, um, I'm gonna use the mini as well today. We're gonna do two things. So first I wanted to show you guys how to do these darling little bags. So with all the um, weeding, so I've got all that done. So basically, you know, I got all of the weeding and everything done. Um, Let's remove that and put me back for center stage. And so let's go ahead and we'll go top down. And I'm going to show you um, the smaller of the two projects. And when the video stream is over, I will go in and put the design space file um, in the description down below in case you guys want to make this yourself. I make these every year for my nieces and nephews, and I just love doing it. It's super simple and it's really inexpensive. So let's go top down. By the way, um, this is another really great iron on project you can do um, with your Cricut Joy, your Explorer, your Maker. And I just put it in a little hoop. Um, and this is actually part of a video I did last year. And of course, using this this year is so sweet. Um, but put ribbon to sort of, you know, edge it out. But I'm actually thinking this year I'm going to make a different one and I'm going to paint it white in advance. And then I'm going to put my fabric on the inside. So, but for our first project, I wanted to show you guys these. So I get these almost every year in the Target dollar spot and they have them at Hobby Lobby and all the craft stores, but um, usually you can find them for a dollar and they're themed, 
you know, by whatever holiday we're on. So these are actually those, these are a, what the, their spirit brand at Target and they um, are year round. And so I loved them because they were pastel. And so I actually bought them last year and then noticed that they were there again this year. So see, they come in a pack of three. So you're going to get a yellow, a blue and a pink in the set. Um, and so then this is one that I you know, already had. Um, but I, I do these for all my nieces and nephews. And so this is really, really sweet. It's just a little bunny. We're going to do a two color. So we have a little bunny. And then one of the things that I love most about owning a Cricut is being able to personalize everything. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but I love to be able to personalize everything. And so I am just going to check this super quick. And guys, if anybody, oh, yeah, oh, there we go. I think I was messing that up in my, <laughs> so if anybody has commented up to this point, I don't think I could see it um, or it wasn't going through at all. So whoever is out there, I would absolutely love to hear your name, hear where you're from. Um, and if you want to share like what kind of cricket you're using, um, I would love to hear that as well. Okay, so what we're going to do is do a two color. We are going to uh, do a two color. And so I'm going to do this darling little bunny. And then we're going to go ahead and um, iron on top of that. And some people get a little nervous. And I was too in the beginning. But about layering iron on. And there's a trick to it. Like you can iron on, you know, or do uh, layers for every day on top of every day you know, that, which that is like your general um, mat, you know, iron on, but you can't do glitter and then put every day on top of that. So just remember that when you're thinking about layering things. So today we are going to do every day iron on on top of every day. And I'm actually using a Caesar um, Easy Weed. Well, when I was weeding these, you probably saw they pulled right away, like so easy. And I put all the links to those down in the description below. But I'm also going to do a glitter on top of a um, everyday or an easy weed. So everyday is what Cricut calls it. It's an everyday. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and move this out of the way. So if you ever use a um, Cricut uh, Easy Press, this is the mat. This is the mat for the Cricut Easy Press. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to place our fabric on it. And, you know, this is something that I used to skip a lot. Like when I first started crafting and um, you look at the instructions for iron on and it says to, you know, like preheat. Right. So like preheat for five seconds. I would never do that. <laughs> I always skipped it until I crafted for a little while longer and I learned that it wasn't just to get out the wrinkles and it wasn't just to like warm up the fabric and that's what I thought it was. It's to remove excess moisture from your project too. And so um, if you are skipping that step, do it. I mean, I know it seems like five seconds. What does that do? But it actually does make a difference. And so we are using a cotton, 100% cotton, and I'm using the everyday or the easy easy weed. And so I'm just going to do this for five seconds and we're going to get the um, any moisture that might be in this out. And then we'll go ahead and start layering on our iron on. So um, I would love, you know, if you guys have questions or anything like that, I would love to hear from you. I can tell there's people out there and I would love to hear your name and all that kind of stuff. And what I did um, say just a moment ago is I think that you have to be subscribed to comment. And I'm not sure if I can turn that off. I'd like to be able to turn that off so that um, you wouldn't necessarily have to do that to be able to comment. Okay, so we have, now I just got the excess out. I'm going to allow it to cool just for a second. And then we're going to place on the bunny. And I like to use a um, fabric ruler whenever I'm doing things like this. Now I do have the large clear acrylic, which candidly I use for, you know, lot t-shirts and all that kinds of thing because it doesn't wrinkle, but I will use a fabric ruler for just about everything. So what I do in Cricut Design Space, and maybe if you guys want to next time, I can actually share my screen for Cricut Design Space, but I will put a square in Cricut Design Space and then lay my design on top of it, you know, like whatever size of, hi, hey Deb, how are you? <laughs> yes, spring is coming, absolutely, thank you. You were the first person to comment today and I so do appreciate that. 
So thank you so much. Um, and so, okay, we are going to then use the fabric one and measure this out. But I did go ahead, like I was saying, and put that shape in Cricut Design Space just to make sure that my design was going to be the right size the first time, especially with something like this. It's like a drawstring because I want to be able to, you know, not accidentally like get a big, too big of a design um, and have it going over the top. And then the little ones, you know, try to do their drawstring because I want to stuff this with candies and things and little eggs for Easter. So I think it's going to be super cute. Okay. So we are like five and a quarter. So I'm going to, I want to be closer to the bottom. I think I'm a little off. There we go. So about one and three quarter, about one and three quarter. I might shift him over just a smidge. Okay. So once I have him where I think he should be, we are 315 and 30 seconds. Oops. We are 315 and 30 seconds for cotton. So we're just going to let that press and then we will allow it to cool just slightly. And once it cools slightly, then we'll go ahead and do the layering on top of that. Hi, Julia. Hi. Thanks so much for joining. Thanks for, for crafting with me. Oh, thank you. The little bag, guys, I tell you what, this little bag is, um, so Deb was contact, commenting on, and Deb, am I getting that right? Rook, Deb? Um, there we go. <laughs> Okay, one thing you guys will know when you craft with me, I am impatient, and so I'm going to try not to be impatient today, but I get impatient, and then I want to blow on things and, like, wave things around. Um, but there we go. Uh, and the bags, um, I'm not sure if you were here when I was saying this before, but these, they're only, like, $3 for three, so, like, a dollar a piece, and these are, like, everyday bags or they're always at Target, and I got it over um, in the gift wrap section. So these are actually, this set is not in, or at least in, not in my target. It's not in like the dollar section. It's in the gift wrap section. So if you pop over there, they have a little set of three um, connected to each other. Okay, so this is cooled down. So I think we can go ahead and peel that off. And guys, you always peel from an angle. And if you ever have, um, you know, any issue and things start to pull away, you just put it back down and do it again. It's no big deal. So there we go. Oh, very cute. Very cute. And by the way, this is a glass craft mat. You guys can see that. Um, and I love using this mat. Like, love it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, Rachel says that she tried sublimation on the canvas. You did. It turned out great. Oh, my goodness. Except one of my words moved and it messed up. Okay. Uh, can I? Can I tell you? <laughs> Many times I've done that. It is so disheartening. And so sometimes I know when people craft with me, they're like, oh my goodness, she goes completely overboard on the tape. And the reason I go overboard on the tape is because I've done that before, like and shifted something and then just been so upset that I messed it up. So I feel you. <laughs> I understand. I'm so sorry. Um, but hopefully it was still like pretty enough um, to you. So I'm, I'm glad you tried that. That's awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll go top down again and we will put on um, all the other pieces. Now, what I will remind you guys is when you are doing iron on, make sure that once you start to layer that you do not, these shouldn't, you know, touch each other, but you do not want to get any of those, um, the little plastic pieces. You don't want them to touch each other. I have actually done iron on projects before and I didn't realize that the little you know, cover was crossing over themselves and I ironed it to the piece of plastic. And so, I mean, I totally ruined the whole thing. Like it was, it was a real bummer. So we are going to be super careful that we don't do that. And we are going to lay Tinsley. This is my little niece. She's two years old. And since I have boys, I tend to craft for my girl nieces. My boys, when they were younger, they would let me, um, they would let me craft for them, you know, and make things for them, t-shirts and stuff like that. I think I'm still a little bit off. And I am crazy about like getting things like this just 
There we go. I think we did it that time. Um, but when they were younger, they would, you know, wear anything I made and like all that stuff was so, so cool. Like mom made me something and now they're, you know, a little bit older. And so I have to go crafting for the <laughs> nieces and nephews, the little ones. They don't mind it. They love it. Okay. So then um, I left these together when I cut them so that they should be perfect in their placement. And you know what? I am going to take my scissors and just trim across the top of that. But I'm thinking about this now and I am afraid, not afraid, but I am thinking that my bow may come super close to that. One thing that I would strongly encourage is if you are, um, like when you're crafting, don't trust your memory, like go back and look at Cricut Design Space for placement and things, because I have like even designs like that I actually designed, I will forget like where something went spatially. And so just, just between me and you, I would go back and check. And speaking of that, I think I'm just going to look at Cricut Design Space real quick and make sure that I have it right. Like my placement of my bow. Okay, so yeah, it is going to go over top of, um, and I should have um, connected them. This is actually not my design. This is Cricut's design. And so instead of it being, you know, like attached, they did it as two separate pieces. So I think I'm going to have to, I should have welded that. So if you recreate this, like I said, I'm going to give you that Cricut Design Space um, file down below in the description after this. So just, I would weld the two together, just use the weld function and put those two colors together. Okay, so let's go back down. Okay. And you know, we could use for this, um, we could use the mini, although I didn't heat her up yet. So we're, mm, kind of like and you know one thing these are great for so like this was the full body bunny i will put it back over top um if i'm worried about you know like messing something up and so that just gives you an extra layer of protection not only for your design but for your machine and so we will go back and do that again okay so i so where are you guys from? So Rachel, if you're still here, like where are you from? Julia, where are you guys from? So I am currently in Alabama. I have lived in tons of states, but I um, am living in Alabama now. I was raised in Alabama um, and my husband is from Ohio. And so we lived in Ohio for a long while, but we are back in the South. And again, with the fanning, <laughs> I can't help it. So again, with the fanning. And so after this, did I, and I, for those of you guys who are new, while this is cooling real quick, I will show you, this is the other design um, that we are going to be using today. We're gonna do this shake your cotton tail. Um, and so this design, um, nobody loves me like Jesus, um, Mr. Hop's lot, and then Hoppy Easter are um, in the description of this video. And so you can see those in the Etsy shop. Um, and if you are on my email list, the Hoppy Easter was in your email on Friday. So guys, my camera has decided to click off. There we go. So if you are on my email list, you would have gotten that for free on Friday. And you guys can join and join me next week if you want to. Okay. And so this was the one that was free last week. Okay, so I think that it's still a little bit warm, but I think we can peel it. We can always test. And you peel from a corner, always from a corner. So it peeled up the one over Tinsley's name, but it did not peel up the one over the little ears. So again, we just wanna go edge to edge. Yes. Yes. So cute. So cute. Okay. So I am going to use that again though, um, because we want to put on her ribbon. what did I do with her ribbon? Oh, <laughs> thank goodness it wasn't under there when I heated it. Cause that would have been terrible. I would have had a cute little ribbon on my, on my mat. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to put the little ribbon on. And again, guys, make sure that if you are making this, um, you know, from that design, just 
weld those two together. There's no reason for us actually to have to press this three times. So there we go. But we will. We will. We'll do that for Tinsley. Montius from Alabama, from Germany. Julia's watching from Germany. Fantastic. Oh, Rock is your dog. Okay, so Deb, I have um, Smokey. Smokey is my dog. It's a giant schnauzer. Um, I wish I had a picture of her. She's absolutely huge, and your dog looks huge as well. Okay, I'm going to let that, once again, start the fanning process because, <laughs> because I am completely impatient, but I think this is going to turn out beautiful, and I'm going to use the blue. Um, I have some little boy nephews that are four and five, and sometimes I make these for my boys anyway, and they just, they let me, they let me because, you know, what are they going to say? And it's Easter, and they want fun stuff. Um and gifts and I still do Easter baskets for my boys. I sure do. I had, you know what, um, my, if you guys have had like a really cool or different kind of Easter basket or done one, I would love to hear that because my cousin did, her, her son was like I don't know, maybe 17 when she did this, but instead of giving him like a regular Easter basket, she gave him a tackle box. He liked to fish. She gave him a tackle box and put, you know, like fishing things in it and then some candies and stuff, too. I just thought that was a really cool idea for an older kid, you know, that was into something like that. I thought that was really neat. OK, so we are going to toss that. So I will take this and I will fill it full of little candies and all kinds of things and give that to my sweet little niece, um, Tinsley. And I'll have to make some for all my other little nieces and nephews, too. So it's a cute little bag those cinches right up. How sweet that is. Okay, so and I do those for almost all the holidays. You know, like if we are um, hosting different things like Halloween and of course Easter and Christmas, I really enjoy these little bags. And you can find them um, definitely at Target in the dollar spot, um, but you can find them at your local craft store and stuff too. In Dollar Tree, um, sometimes maybe not this quality, you know, of fabric, but sometimes um, has those as well. Okay, so next up we are going to make. Um, that shake your cottontail shirt and I'm excited about this if you guys um, are just joining then um, this right here is um, something I made last year and this is super cute I'll put it on the top down see that so just this is just regular you know fabric and then I put he is risen on it I just think it turned out so so sweet and then um, I put the little ribbon on the edges, but as I was saying earlier, I'm going to do another one of these year this year, but I'm going to paint it in advance. So yes, I'm going to paint that in advance. Okay. So let's go ahead. I'm going to move these out of the way real quick. And I'm going to get my shirt. And most likely my little niece Tinsley will get this one as well. I have another little niece who's seven, but I think this size, um, I think she may have outgrown this size. And so I'll have to get a bigger t-shirt to make her one. So I went ahead um, and you guys saw there at the beginning, we went ahead and cut this out and weeded it. Um, and so what I want to do is I just want to take um, either a fabric tape measure or um, my, yeah, I'm going to use this. I'm going to, this makes me so much happier. I can see through it. Um, and by the way, guys, everything that we're using is down in the description. So if you are looking for any of these items for your um, own craft studio, then you can pop down and check those out. And by the way, guys, if you are enjoying crafting with me, don't forget to hit that like button. I would really appreciate it. Okay, and so uh, the supplies and the resources are linked down in the description, um, along with all the videos for the other items that we talked about earlier, the other craft ideas. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to um, layer our iron on again. And this time though, we're going to layer glitter. So I wanted to do something really fun and I'm using a glitter, a little palm to go on the tail of the bunny. And this is what the design, the overall design looks like. So you see it right there. And so we have little eggs. It's like, I think one, six colors, six different colors. Okay, so what we're going to do though is I'm going to start with the shake. And by the way, I know I went through that quick on the weeding of this, but if you are weeding this particular font, 
Um, just be super careful. It's beautiful. I love it. But you can see that it has all these little pieces and parts in there. And so if you're not careful, you can accidentally weed out part that you don't want to because I did that. <laughs> Yes, I did. Actually, more than once. Not today, but I did that. Okay, so we are going to start with the word shake. We're going to put that down. I'm going to go back to comments in case anybody else um, wants to say hi or has a question. Okay. And so I have shake in place. Let's just make sure. And then um, this another, remember we just did this on the other one, but make sure that you trim out all the way around um, your plastic liner. You do not want to accidentally iron it on top of another one. It will make you so sad, guys, I promise. So sad. And like we talked about, go back and look at your original design and make sure that you are doing all the placement correct. Um, this, I designed this myself, but I have to go back and like sometimes look and just make sure, like for instance, this, the T's are supposed to be right underneath the Y and the O. And what we're going to do is lay as many items down as we can. And then we are going to press it one time. And when you do this, you really want to be able to use a press, if you can, you know, that will fit over the entire design. And this is the nine by nine, which by the way, um, guys, right now, Cricut, and I put some links down below, but Cricut has a 70% off sale on tons of things. Now, this one's not 70% off, but it is, I think, I want to say it's $30 or $50 off of its original price. And then, like, the Cricut Maker is $150 off right now. So, if you are in the market for any of those things, you want to check out that Cricut sale. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and do this one. I want to go ahead and put on, so the cotton will go over the top of this one. So that'll be our second. And then the tail, we want to go ahead and do that one. And if I look at my original design, I can see that it is going to sit right underneath. So we're just going to trim that out a little bit. It's going to sit right underneath those two T's. And you know what? I don't trust it. I know that's crazy, but I sometimes I have done it before and thought, oh, they're not touching. I just don't, I don't trust it. So I'm just going to take it off and I'm not going to have any problems. So we're going to go ahead and put that back on right underneath the Y and the O. Making sure that we have everything straight. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, and so then we'll go ahead with this one as well. So if you guys have any questions, I would absolutely love to help. If there's anything going on with your cricket adventures that you want to talk about, I am here. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and put on um, the green. So I know it's such a tiny little piece of iron on, but I thought the eggs just did not look right if we didn't have just a little touch of grass in there. Um, and you know, this is this is why you save all your remnant pieces, guys. This is it because you want to be able to. Add little details like this. There we go. Okay, and I think that I am not going to put on the eggs just because they, well, maybe, maybe I can. But I don't, you know what, I'm not because I want them to sit kind of like right on that grass and they won't be in the way of what we're layering here on cotton so i'm not going to do that but what i am going to do is go ahead and put on the next layer or the um, not layer but the little cotton fuzzy there we go oh but you see that you see that i can't right because once again i've got to cut that out so what's everybody making unfortunately oh rachel it was ruined so Rachel is saying that her, um, was fortunately it was ruined, but I have a few more canvases and I'm going to try again and use better tape this time. Glad I came across your channel. I'm glad you did too. Love your crafts. And you're in Savannah, Georgia. Oh my, that is a beautiful place. Savannah, Georgia is absolutely gorgeous. What a fun place to live. Okay, so here we go. We're going to put that back down. You know, the nice thing about um, crafting, I mean, I just enjoy crafting. And so um, 
sometimes I've ruined so many projects before and it is definitely a bummer, but I enjoy the process, especially if I can make something for someone that I love. And we, um, if you guys crafted with me in the, um, the bunny basket video, you know, I was talking about, um, my most treasured items are things that my mom or my grandmother have made for me. And those are just um, so much more precious than just having, you know, things. And so I, I love the crafting process. I love giving things to people and them actually, you know, being like, oh, wow, she made me that and keeping it and that kind of thing. So sometimes we ruin stuff. It really stinks. I'm so sorry, Rachel. I've done it a ton, <laughs> an absolute ton. But every time I do it, I learn, right? So every time I do it, I learn. Okay, so I'm hoping all of this sticks down well. Just realized you guys were looking at my head and not. Sorry, I almost had to sneeze. Okay, so I think it's good and in place and we have one layer of everything. And so I'm just going to check and make sure that that C is on the same you know, plane as that because it's a little awkward. These, this font is not, you know, there we go. Okay, so I think we are good. Okay, so while that is pressing, if anybody has anything or wants to say hi in the comments, I would love to hear from you. And I was going duly live over on Amazon and something glitched and didn't, didn't go. Hi, Julia, you're crafting and sewing for your twin's birthday. Oh, wow. Twins, that would be so cool. How old are they? There we go. That looks good. Okay, so we're going to have to let that cool a little bit. So, Julia, are they little, little people or are they big people? I have big people these days. <laughs> I have uh, teenage boys. Yeah. And actually today, um, my son, I can only craft for about 20 more minutes because um, my youngest is playing in a soccer game today. And so I'm going to go and sit and watch him play. I'm excited about that. He really enjoys it. Your sister lives in Ohio, Rachel. That's awesome. Yeah, we lived, um, and you craft together on Zoom. Oh my gosh, that is genius. That is absolutely genius. And you're crafting together this Friday and should be making shirts and I'm going to, that is fan, that is a genius idea. I, my mom now lives near me, but if I had thought about that when she and I lived in two different places, well, actually, you know, back then, they probably didn't have Zoom, but, um, but that would have been fantastic. I love that idea. I guess that's, you know, one thing that COVID did for us, right? It helped us to learn technology and how to do all those things. Okay, so I think we can let this cool for just a second and we'll go ahead and take our other colors. They're turning six in March. So Julia said that they were turning six, her twins are turning six in March. That's fantastic. And hi, Meta. It is from Denmark, late to the stream. We'll watch it tomorrow as I'm almost midnight here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I appreciate you stopping in for a quick minute. Absolutely. I love this little feature of be able to put y'all's comments on the stream. That's awesome. Okay, so I think this is good and cool. So what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and from a corner, hopefully everything lay down. Now again, guys, this is Caesar Easy Weed. So if you, um, the colors, the green is called apple, or green apple is probably what it is. What does it say? It is, it's green apple is the green, and flamingo is this little color. So this is flamingo, and this is passion pink, which looks really a little crazy on screen. I was thinking my colors didn't look quite as, as I, you know, as perfect as they do in real life, um, but it is a beautiful pink. It's a really pretty pink. It's almost kind of a, a fuchsia-ish purple. So we always peel from an edge. So let's get 
my little cotton tail there. It's all coming off really, really well. And guys, I cannot express enough. Just take your time when you're doing things like this. Don't be in a rush. And if anything peels up, it's no big deal. Just put it back down and go again. Yeah, that actually did really, really well. And that was um, 315 for 30 seconds on a cotton t-shirt. And if you like these designs, they are down in the description below. This this might be my favorite color. I forget what it's called though. What is um, Jacksonville teal? I think is what it is. I love that color. If you guys ever craft with me, you know everything in here is blue. Just about it. I have a thing for blue. Fantastic! Oh guys, it's looking really, really good. Check that out. Looking really good. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to put on all of our additional pieces as well as the little eggs. And so I have cotton right so we're just going to lay that and I did this design this way just because I thought I mean it would have been pretty with just you know just the word but I love um, to layer I love to layer it looks really good and then actually you know I did that and then I did exactly what I told you guys not to do and not to leave that little piece of plastic on there or if you want to leave it on there, just know, you know, I wouldn't take the risk. I would actually press it twice. I wouldn't risk my design um, by, you know, putting my glitter on top of that and it not, not working. Oh, what am I saying? Okay, so guys, this right here, because it this is 330. So the, this, is it going to focus for us? <laughs> It's not focusing for me, but this is glitter where the rest of this is every day. And so we want to actually do that as a different temperature because it is just slightly hotter. So it is going to be a um, 330 degree for 30 seconds. And if you guys are joining me late, I have down in the description below our links to everything um, that we're doing today. I'd love for you guys to hop down and check those out. Actually, I think I had designed it to where this one went this way. And let's see if I can put the other egg on um, and get that over to this way. Lynette from Australia. Fantastic. You guys are amazing. What time is it in Australia? I guess in Denmark it's midnight. Australia is actually one of those places that I have always wanted to visit. I always said I would visit, maybe when I retire. There we go. If I ever retire, right? So, but yes, that would be a fantastic. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and press the second layer, um, and then we will press on the final, which is the glitter. And so this is just going to be um, another 30 seconds. And you know, I do, I really wish I had a way to protect that with like a piece of parchment or something or a lot of times I will use this you know which is like the leftover but I don't know is I have enough of it and my parchment is not in here so we are going to we're going to go that route most of it is covered so that'll work put this down and 30 seconds. Good night. <laughs> Good night for Denmark. Thank you, beautiful colors. It, these are some really, really fun colors. All of these are Caesar um, colors. And it's 9.50 a.m. in Australia. Okay, now that's actually good. I, I like crafting in the morning. Um, I actually did this one this afternoon just because I've kind of been testing times. Um, I've done some Saturday mornings, and so I've just kind of been testing times and see, you know, when people are available. Um, and I know it's tough with kids and things coming home from um, school and that kind of thing to be able to. And then, of course, you know, like for me tonight, going to a sporting event when you've got littles in the house or even um, 
if you're a grandmother, grandfather, and you're going to those kinds of things. Okay, so we will let this cool just a little bit. And by the way, guys, this is a Monag shirt. Um, if anyone was curious about this, it's 100% cotton Monag. And it's really cute because if you see, it has like the little ruffle sleeves. I just thought that was super sweet. My mom used to make um, t-shirts for a little Etsy shop. She did it as kind of just like a side fun thing to do. And she had some extras. And so she gave those to me. Okay, so we are going to peel slowly and easily. And of course the word tail was already down. So we're just going to go over those eggs. Ah, oh, it turned out good. We've had really good luck with this. Everything has come off perfectly. I have always had really good um, results from Caesar Easy Weed. I have with, you know, Cricut as well. But these colors happen to be Caesar colors. And I got them from Heat Transfer Warehouse, um, which is linked down in the description below. What do you guys think? Very nice, right? Okay, so one more, one more thing. And I want to say, <coughs> excuse me, one, I want to actually use the Easy Press Mini if I can, just because I would like to not re-iron over top of everything. Now this is a little bit different than it would be if it's like sublimation or infusible ink. Um, when you really, really don't want to um, go over it a second time because you can make things ghost and shift and that kind of thing. Iron-on is a little bit more forgivable, but look at how sweet, how sweet that's going to turn out. Just a little touch of glitter. I mean, because glitter can be kind of difficult um, on kids' t-shirts, you know, because it can be stiff and that kind of thing, especially if it's the younger ones. And so um, I actually, I forget what it's called. There's a different kind. It's not like the glitter shimmer. Maybe it's called shimmer. Um, and that one I really like because it's not as, I shouldn't have set those all on top of each other. It's not as uh, stiff once you put it down. Okay. So there we go. So let's just see if we can't use our mini. You know, one thing about the mini is that Oh goodness, guys, I see that I have that kind of crooked. Apologies. But that will drive me nuts if I don't fix that. There we go. Okay, and so now we're only on that one particular spot. You know, the only thing about the mini is, of course, um, and I'm actually going to set the timer because it doesn't, you know, you don't have a timer to it, so I don't like that part. But I love to be able to get in the tiny little grooves and the tiny little spaces. And this guy right now on this Cricut sale that they're having, um, which is linked up down below, it is, um, I want to say it's $30 off, or maybe it's $49.99. Maybe the mini's $49.99 right now on the deal. So if you guys need one of these, hop down and check that out. Okay, and that's time. Let's see how it looks. We'll let that cool for just a second. And, um, oh, thank you, Julia. Julia says, so cute. I'm, I'm hoping my niece enjoys it. Um, I know that she loves all things cute and pink and that kind of thing. So her big sister does. And so she tends to like everything her big sister likes. Okay, so don't forget we did this one and I will put this up in the description below. So these little bags at Target, um, and actually, you know what, I linked the bags down there too, like if you guys do the Target pickup or whatever. Um, but this one, it comes in a set with a yellow and with a blue, and so you can make these and fill them full of little Easter candies. Um, it turns out super, super sweet. And then don't forget, um, um, this one is down there as well, and so he has risen, just really sweet little art for the holiday season. So let's, and guys, by the way, I feel super blessed that you guys crafted with me today. I couldn't be um, more happy just to be able to get together with some friends. Craft, oh, it turned out so good, guys. And craft with some like-minded people. I really, really appreciate it. And everybody was really sweet in the comments. And I have to admit, 
that over on Amazon not too long ago, I had some really unsweet comments. <laughs> I appreciate you guys being so sweet in the comments, but it turned out really, really good. Check it out. Yay. And so we will craft again together um, next week. My hair is getting so long. So Deb, you're being very, very sweet. It's called not getting to, I really need to go get it cut, but you're being very sweet. It is, it has definitely been giving me a lot of angst lately. Um, and I'm getting some craze. Oh my gosh, it's terrible. But, you know, it's just God's way of telling us that we're only short for this world, right? It's okay. <laughs> Gray is okay. Um, but yeah, so there we go. So we have a cute little t-shirt and we have a sweet little bag. And I hope that you guys will pop down in the description and check those out. And I thank you so much for crafting with me and I will see you next time.